In this video, I will walk you through configuring a connection to an Omron controller via Omron Fin's Ethernet protocol using the top server. I will cover some best practices specific to the Omron Fin's Ethernet protocol, as well as the channel and device setup in top server, including what can be left at the default values and when it is appropriate to change certain values from the default values. So as I mentioned, I'd like to cover some best practices when it comes to the Omron Fins Ethernet protocol. Uh, one of the main configurations with Fins Ethernet communications is that the PLCs need, need a way to map Fins node numbers to IP addresses. The reason for that is because IP addresses aren't actually contained in Fins messages and must be actually derived from the Fins network parameters that are included in Fins protocol messages. So the actual PLC itself is configured to handle that conversion in one of the following ways. And this is defined in the conversion section um, in the, of the FENS UDP settings in the Omron CX programmer programming software. So the first method is automatic conversion method. And this is the easiest method and the one most commonly used. The IP address table method is where the IP address table in the controller explicitly maps nodes to IP addresses in a delimited table format allowing customization for most implementations. Now the third option is the combination method, which uses both of the above automatic conversion and IP address table. Now when a PLC, and using combination method, when a PLC sends a message to a given FINS node, it checks the IP address table for that node. If the node is listed in the IP address table, the PLC sends the message to the IP address in that table entry. If an entry is not found, the PLC constructs an IP address with the automatic conversion method. Now, any, any method besides automatic is going to require an IP address table configured in the Omron PLC, and node and unit IDs will need to match what is configured for the parameters on the next slide. So, continuing on with our best practices, in addition to defining the IP address of the PLC when you're configuring top server, it's necessary to define the following FINS network configuration parameters. Now the uh, Omron FINS Ethernet driver and top server automatically defines the first four based on the IP address and the NIC selected uh, in the configuration. So the first FINS network configuration parameter is the source network address. And that's the network address of the source device, which in our case is the top server machine. Uh, the Omron FINS Ethernet driver. Now, typically zero is used for the local network unless you're using FINS routing through another Omron controller um, for communications with your ultimate destination device. And then there's the source node, and that's the same as the last octet of the local top server machine IP address. So it'll be the last octet um, of the uh, IP address assigned to the NIC on the top server machine. Then we have the destination network address, and that's the network address of the destination device, i.e. the Omron PLC. Now, again, typically zero is also used for the local network for this parameter, unless FINS routing is being used. Then we have the destination node, and that's the same as the last octet of the Omron PLC's IP address. And then we have the destination unit, and that's a unit number as configured on the Omron PLC. Now, depending on what type of Omron, what model you have, um, that could potentially be configured either in the CX programming software or via some, um, some switches, some rotary switches on the actual uh, physical Omron PLC itself. And last but not least, with best practices, we also have uh, what we like to refer to as NIC multi-homing, and there are some use cases for that. Uh, so unlike other Ethernet drivers in top server like a Modbus or Siemens, uh, Omron FINS protocol requires a unique uh, network adapter and port combination in order to have each device on a separate channel. That is, you may or may not be aware, one of our one of our general best practices for top server is that each device should have its own channel if it's an Ethernet driver uh, for the best communication so you can communicate, so top server can communicate with all of your Ethernet PLCs in parallel without having to do round robin polling. Uh, so with, as I mentioned, with Omron FINS, it's different than those Ethernet drivers because it requires that unique NIC and port combination. Uh, so you have two options for accomplishing um, having devices on their own channel. Each Omron controller would have to be configured with a unique port, uh, the default of which is 9600, so each of your controllers would have to have a unique port. So one could be 9600, the next could be 9601, uh, the next could be 9602, so on and so forth. 
Uh, so that would actually have to be changed from the default on each of your actual Omron controllers to be able to do that in top server. Now the next alternative is that the local network adapter on the top server machine could be multi-homed to have a unique local IP address for each of your PLCs. Uh, so if you left all of your Omron PLCs at the default of 9600 for the port, um, you could potentially have a multi-homed NIC that has an IP address for 192.168.111. And another IP address for 192.168.111.2, and so on and so forth. And then you would select each of those unique IP addresses when you're configuring your NIC in the channel configuration of Top Server. Uh, so otherwise, um, if you're not if you're not doing either of those, um, so that you can have each device on its own channel in Top Server, it would be necessary to configure each channel in Top Server with multiple devices. Um, which, if you don't have a lot of devices, that could be acceptable, depending on how fast you need your update rates to be. Because uh, it will actually slow down communications, because we're having to do a round-robin polling to each device, as opposed to communicating with each device in parallel at the same time. So then my top server, I'm going to start a new project. And under my connectivity section, I'm going to click to add a new channel. And from the type of channel to be created, I need to select the Omron Fins Ethernet driver, as you can see here. And then I need to give a unique user-friendly name to that channel. So I'm just going to call this Fins Enet. And we'll click Next. And, you know, we talked a lot about network adapters in the best practices. Um, here's where you actually select the network adapter of the local machine that you want to use. Now, ordinarily, I would say, just go ahead and click Next. Uh, you can leave this at the default. With Omron Fins, though, as we discussed with multi-homing as a use case, um, here's where you would, if you multi-homed your NIC for multiple IP addresses, you would click that button, go into Available Network Adapters, and your available IP addresses that had been multi-homed would be available here. So here I would select the IP address that I wanted to use for my connection to the Omron Fins controller. And as you can see, the IP address for that NIC is 192.168.5.103. Remember, the 103 equals we'll see that when we configure our Omron Fins parameters a little bit later on in the device configuration. So I'm going to click OK there to select my network adapter. Then I'm going to click Next. Now, here are the right optimization methods and duty cycle. In general, it's perfectly acceptable to leave these at the default, which we're going to do here for the purpose of the quick start. Click Next. Same thing with floating point value handling. We're going to leave that at the default of replace with zero. And then we get to the port configuration, which again, as I mentioned with the whole multi-homing scenario, if instead of multi-homing a NIC, we had actually chosen to define a different unique port number on each of our Omron controllers, here's where you would change that. As I said, the default is 9600, and that's actually what's used by the CX programming software as a default. So, for instance, if I had five different five different controllers and each had been configured with 9600, 9601, 9602, 9603, 9604, here's where I would change the port number for each of those. And then I would have just left my network adapter earlier at the default. So we're going to leave this at the default of 9600 since we specifically selected a NIC. And I'm going to click Next. And that's all there is for the channel configuration. And you'll see I get this nice summary of my settings. And anything that was changed from the default, as you can see here, is in bold. But this also gives you the opportunity to review your choices. And if I decided, oh, I actually do need to change the port number after all, then right in the, right in the summary without having to click back, I can go in and change that right in the summary. But all of my settings are correct, so I'm going to go ahead and click Finish to finish my channel configuration. Okay, so you see my channel is completed. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to configure a device. So I'm going to click to Add Device. And for my device, I'm going to define that as Omron CJ1 because I'm going to be connecting to an Omron CJ1 PLC. And then I click Next. Then I need to select the device model. And in Top Server, where you've got multiple devices available for the model, uh, this, this defines the available addressing that's supported for that particular controller. So, you see I have a CJ1 option available on my model list. I'm going to click CJ1 there. 
And uh, so you would select the model that specifically corresponds to your actual Omron controller from the model here. I'm going to click next. And here is where we actually define the IP address that's been assigned to the actual Omron PLC. So I'm going to type in my IP address, which is 192.168.111.4. I'm going to click next and remember that four because we'll see that come up again when we get to our FENS parameters. I'm going to click next. Then we get to our scan mode settings and we're going to leave that at the default. Um, covering the specifics of that is beyond this particular tutorial, but we're going to keep that at the default behavior of respect client specified scan rate, which is going to make our poll rate be controlled by our client application. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. We'll keep the defaults for the timing parameters with respect to the connect timeout, request timeout, and those settings. We're going to leave auto demotion disabled as a default. And then we get to the request size. Now this determines um, the maximum number of bytes that can be requested from the Omron controller in a single request. Now default's 512. Um, if you're on a reliable uh, network, Ethernet network, you can max this out uh, for the fastest performance. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to the maximum of uh, 1984 bytes. I'm going to click next. And then we get to the preferred driver behavior. And if you're going to be accessing the counter status or the timer status addresses in your on-run controller when you're in run mode. So the default is to fail any writes to those CS and TS addresses and log a message to the event log that that occurred. Now, we're going to keep that default, but just be aware you do have the option if you want to be able to successfully write to CS and TS addresses. Uh, we support setting the, uh, it would, we, upon receiving a write to either of those, um, the controller would set the PLC to monitor mode and perform the write, or you could set the PLC to monitor mode, perform the write, and then actually set the PLC back to run mode. So if you need to be able to write to counter status or timer status addresses, we do support that. You would select the behavior that you wanted to occur uh, from this setting. I'm going to leave that at the default and click next. And then we get to our FENS network parameters. So I'm just going to expand this and resize it so that we have all of those in the same place. Now, as we covered earlier in the best practices, the source network address um, is going to be zero for the local network because we're not making any FENS routing connections. The source node is the last octet of my network adapter's IP address, as you can see, 103 matches what you saw earlier. The destination network address, again, is going to be the local network because we're not using any FENS routing. The destination node is the last octet of my Omron controller's IP address, which is 4, as you saw when I specified the IP address just a moment ago. And uh, we're going to define a destination unit address of 1 because that's what's configured on our PLC. So then I'm going to click Next, and that's it for the device configuration. You'll see we get a similar device summary that would allow me to, if I needed to go back in and change the request size, or change my CS and TS write behavior, or change any of those network configuration parameters, I could just do that right from the settings here in the summary. So I'm going to go ahead and click Finish to complete configuring my device. And the last step would be to configure a static tag if you were choosing to define a static tag database and top server, which you don't have to. Uh, for the purposes of this example, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to define a tag called data memory one. And for my address, if I click this ellipsis button here, you'll see that I get some hints that help me select what, what address I actually want to specify. So I know I'm, I'm, I want to access a data memory type, which is a D type address. So these are alphabetical order. And I want that to be a word data type. So I find that in the list, double click on that. You'll see it adds the hint. Uh, so obviously that's not a valid address because it's a range and a data type at the end. So, but if I want to do uh, data memory with the offset of zero, I can delete everything after that. Click OK, and you'll see my data type of Word is the default for that type of memory. Um, in addition to that, if I go back in here and I click Help, it actually launches the Omron FINS Ethernet driver help file. And as you can see, 
I have an addressing section of valid addresses, their ranges, and their default data types. The default data type is always in bold so that you know um, what the default is going to be if you don't specify a different data type. Uh, but you also see that what the data types are that are actually supported for that address and also what the read write access is, which means you can read and write to it if it supports both of those. So uh, it's a good way to know what your valid addressing is and what it isn't. But as I mentioned, you don't actually have to have a static address in top server. You could also, from Wonderware, you could also specify that D00000 address um, and then an at data type at the end of that if you wanted to access dynamically without having this actual static tag. Uh, so for instance, I could define D00000 at word or at string or at float um, or any of the supported data types that you saw in that help file and that will allow me to specify that dynamically from Wonderware and other client applications. So that's it. Um, you can see that's relatively easy. Um, the last thing I will leave you with um, is that if you were to configure one static address just for testing purposes, we do recommend that because that then allows you to launch the OPC Quick Client, which will auto-populate with that one static tag and show you whether you have good status and a good value. Um, and you can test that, make sure that your channel device properties are correct before you go through configuration of your client application.